story I'd like to share with everyone. When I was a teenager, before I really got interested in religion, a fundamentalist Christian once told me that because I was not a believer, that Jesus was going to say to me, depart from me, for I never knew you. And my response, without even thinking, was, well, you never introduced yourself. This really underscores the paradox of the belief in a God who is personal, who watches over us, who desires our love, who desires our worship, and yet at the same time never really introduces himself, remains off in this unseen, invisible realm with no evidence whatsoever that any religious claims, if any, are at all true. Now, many Christians and Muslims will use the life's a test excuse for this, to try to resolve this paradox, that presumably you're going to go through life and at the end of it the curtain's going to be raised and there's going to be God and God's going to say, well, you picked the right religion or you picked the wrong religion, almost like some kind of a twisted game show. And that sounds really absurd, but it gets even more ridiculous as you dig down deep into it. Now, one of the Muslim answers to my questions as to how it is that Allah watched the Jews run off the beaten path and get it all wrong, then sent Jesus down, and then watched the Christians completely ignore what Jesus says, decides to worship him instead, so they run off the beaten path and get it all wrong. And Allah decides that the solution to this problem is to speak to some guy some six centuries later, who lives in a completely different country, who has absolutely no credibility or authority in the Christian world. And that's supposed to solve the problem. I mean, what? Can you imagine the bishops of Rome or Constantinople thinking to themselves, well, let's see, I could remain a part of this church that was established by Jesus and the people who knew him, or I can believe this other guy who just says that we got it all wrong and it turns out he knows Jesus better than the very people who walked with Jesus, who were his apostles and disciples. Hmm, decisions, decisions. I mean, come on. The test, first of all, is not fairly administered, if indeed that's what this is. Your odds of being a Muslim, and thereby passing the test, are far greater if you grew up in a Muslim country or in a Muslim family. And while it is true that some people do change religions, you can't deny the fact that the test is not fairly administered, that it favors people who were born at the right place and at the right time. Additionally, I, I have to wonder what this test exactly is about. If you were to apply for a job and your prospective employer gave you a mathematics test, then you'd assume that the job involves people who are good with math, and the test is designed to separate people who are good with math versus people who are not. Now, in this particular case, the test is we have to believe the outlandish claims of some prophet who lived over a thousand years ago, some guy who claimed that God spoke to him. We're supposed to believe this on the basis of no evidence whatsoever. There is no proof that this religion is the correct one versus any others. We're supposed to just believe it on the basis of somebody else's say-so. And we're supposed to accept testimony that we would never accept from any other religion. So essentially what this test is, is how adept you are at special pleading and gullibility. Essentially the gullible are supposed to be the ones who actually pass this test. And you have to kind of wonder, what kind of a God is this that wants the gullible but not the critical thinkers in heaven? Maybe this is a God who is looking to have, you know, syncophantic slaves and is so insecure that this God needs to have just this, this chorus of people in heaven praising him all the time. And is this the kind of God that you really want to worship? A God who is basically harvesting slaves? And what proof can you offer that that really is the test? Maybe the test is the critical thinkers get to heaven. Maybe when the curtain rises, uh, Allah is going to say, sorry Muslims, you're just too gullible to come into heaven. You see, the whole test was designed to figure out who's going to use the power of reason that I gave them and who's going to think critically and evaluate all the different claims and, and really try to understand the way the universe actually works through the scientific method. You see, in heaven we need really big academic achievers and, and great minds here because we're competing with uh, another god and another creation down the street. And so we, we only need the best here. Sorry, Muslims, but you all get confined to oblivion because you were just too gullible. It's really something to think about here. So the it's a test or life's a test really doesn't adequately answer the question. Thanks for trying, though. <laughs>